Welcome back. Once again, it's Tim. Yep, that's what's for dinner. Tonight, we've been making gumbo. As you can see, I'm getting everything ready so I can start cooking. I'm peeling my shrimp. I got my chicken ready. I'm going to grill them uh, chicken thighs and put them in there. But my cousin, she don't eat gumbo. So I'm going to make her some fried chicken. That's why I got these legs and wings over here. I'm going to season them up and get some country fried chicken. Then I got everything ready for I got my, my Maison Plaza. I got my salt, my, my hot pepper for my hot sauce. Got my andouille sausage, my bell peppers, my onions, my celery, my Worcestershire sauce, my gumbo filo, filet, my um, bay leaves, my beef bouillon cubes, my thyme, my uh, sugar, flour, garlic, uh, minced garlic, white vinegar, my bacon fat, my frozen okra, my tomato sauce, stewed tomatoes, my Creole season, and my frozen uh, crab meat. That'll be thawed out when I start cooking. And to top it off, I'm going to put these uh, sea bass crab claws in there. So when you get a bowl, you have some of this goodness there on top. I'll get back with you when I start cooking. But right now, I'm prepping. I'll be ready back with you in about 30, 45 minutes. Look out now. That gumbo going to come at you hard. Watch out. All right, I'll everybody. Back. I'm back. Um, yep, yep. That's what's for dinner. Um, I'm going to start off by seasoning my chicken thighs with just salt and pepper. Then I'm going to pan sear them um, until they're done. Um, I'll give you some pictures of the pan serum once I get them in there, but I'm just seasoning them basically with just some salt and pepper. Get them in a the pan with a little bit of oil. And let them get, uh, get right. Then uh, I'm going to set them to the side. All right, see you in a minute. The black. Boy, do you like it? Just going to put a little bit of salt, <laughs> a little bit of pepper. But this one's mine. I don't want to. Try not to touch my meat as, as little as possible. So I got me some tongs. Turn it over. Get it on the other side. Get it with a little bit more salt. A little bit more pepper. I don't have to put a lot of seasoning on this chicken because it's gonna be plenty of season in the gumbo. So just salt and pepper, that's it. From there, I got my pan on the stove. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. I'm gonna add a little oil, a little um, canola oil. Just a little canola oil, about two tablespoons, maybe three. Get that a few minutes so it can get, get hot. Once they get right, I'm gonna put the chicken down in there. I don't wanna get that too hot, I don't wanna burn the chicken. Just wanna cook it nice and slow so it can get cooked through and through. No rushing this. Take your time with your gun, buddy. The oil has reached the temperature that I want. I'm gonna put, them, put the chicken in here piece by piece. When I put it in, I'm gonna slide it around, get a little oil under it so it don't stick. I'm gonna do each individual piece like that. So look. Make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Turn that down a little bit. Don't want it to cook too fast. Cook too fast, it's going to burn and stick to the bottom. I put my thighs in there skin side down because if the skin was on it, it'd be on that side. The bone would be on this side. So I put it skin side down to the flatter surface, get the color that I want on that side. Because that's like the display side. If I was gonna use these and uh, make something else, uh, like a, a honey glazed chicken or an orange chicken, I want that brown side. So it's gonna get the flat brown, really be a nice good color, good presentation color. But I'm gonna let these cook. I'm gonna go season up my chicken wings and legs, and I'll be right back with you. Remember, whenever you put raw meat in the sink, you know, you make sure you decontaminate the sink. Uh, get you some soap water, preferably some antibacterial soap, like uh, Dawn, and uh, clean your sink out. 
so you're not transferring any of those contam contaminated any of your dishes when you go in there to touch the wash dishes. Good wash, and I spray it down. I know you can hear that chicken still sizzling in the back while I'm waiting. I'm gonna take my vegetables, these are my bell peppers, my onions, it's one cup of each, coarsely chopped. Three stalks of celery, coarsely chopped. I have a ninja, so I'm gonna mash them down in this ninja, and I'm gonna pulse it and put these two cloves of minced garlic right on top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my lid on, get down there. Fine. This is a good job. Stop it. You shake it up a little bit to get some of them big chunks down to the bottom. Put it back on. Open Take my lid off and see what I got. Yeah, that's about it right there. You look down in there, you can see how everything is all finely cut, chopped, minced together. This is all gonna go in my roux once I get my roux done. So I'm gonna pause right here for a minute. I'm gonna check on my chicken back here. As you can see, I got my wings and legs already seasoned, ready to go. Normally when I make country fried chicken, I crack me a couple eggs, whisk them together. Mix it on here, pour my flour on there. You got a nice, thick, crispy, crunchy batter on top of it. All right, we'll be right back. I'm back. And you can see my chicken is browning real well. It's cooking nice and slow. I got my vegetables over here ready to go. So once I get that roux ready, I just gotta pour these vegetables right on top of that roux. Um, so this is gonna be a, a nice and slow process. I wish I could time lapse this video for you, but I'm still getting the hang of using this phone and all its gadgets and things that comes with it. So just stick with me though. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get you through this process. I'm gonna help help you make some good good gumbo. So just, just stick with me. Alright, so once I get the gumbo made, you know, once I get the, this chicken done, I'm gonna put it to the side and let it rest in a plate on some paper towel so it can drain some of that oil off of it. Cause it's gonna be enough uh, oil up from the roux, the bacon fat that I um, used to make the roux. We'll make the bacon fat over here in my uh, my nice my nice crock pot. It's gonna be something lovely. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait till I get to doing it. Still trying to learn how to use this uh, Digimon too thing too. I don't, know, I don't know if it's a Digimon or Digimon or however you say it, but. I'm still trying to get used to using it. But it's gonna take some time. We're gonna get through this process together. All right? All right. I'm back. Now it's time to get to the nitty gritty of making a uh, gumbo. Now we're about to make the roux. The roux is the base of everything there is that is gumbo. Um, I start out with three quarter cups of bacon fat. I put it over here in my, my Dutch oven. I know I called it a crock pot earlier, but it's not a crock pot, it's a Dutch oven. Put it over here in my Dutch oven. Got my heat on medium high. I'm gonna let this get warm a little bit. Then I'm gonna add one cup of flour. While I'm waiting on that to get warm, I'm gonna take my six beef bouillon cubes. And I have here, I have three cups of water. It's on low heat, I mean on medium heat. This is on, the uh, roux is on medium high. Once I get that, that bacon fat warm, I'm gonna turn down the medium. The key to, to a good roux is to continue to whisk it and whisk it and whisk it. Even when you pull it off, as long as it's still cooking, you wanna whisk it. I have me a trivet sitting over here. So when I pull it off to let it cool, I'm gonna put it on that trivet and let it cool. But as you can see, my bacon fat is starting to get clear, meaning it's, it's, it's warming up. 
Once it's warm, I put my flour in there and I, I can I start whisking it and continue to whisk it. I whisk it until it's a mahogany brown color. Once it becomes mahogany brown, that is the color that you wanted to see. Um, and once that is done, you pull it off, keep whisking until it cools. Once it cools a little bit or stops cooking, you add this back to vegetables that I minced. So your onions, your bell peppers, and your celery. One cup of each, uh, coarsely chopped. So my bacon fat is starting to look good. This process takes anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes. You have to constantly whisk it. Um, that's so you don't burn it. If you stop whisking it and you just let it sit, it will burn. So you must pay attention and um, babysit your, your roux. Or you're going to mess the whole thing up and have to start over. And next, It's a long process, so you want to get it right the first time. I'm going to see if I can get this right the first time. Nah, I'm going to get it right the first time. So just stick with me. As you can see, I add my flour in. A whole cup of flour. That's three quarter cups of bacon fat. I'll get my whisk. And I'll start incorporating that flour into the bacon fat. I know everybody looking at this like, ooh, that's a lot of fat. Yeah, it's a lot of fat, but it's also a lot of flavor. And once I whisk it and I get this incorporated and make it smooth, all I got to do is continue to whisk it until it gets mahogany brown. As you can see, this bacon fat is already a nice light grayish brown now. But I just got to whisk it and get all these lumps out of it because you don't want all these lumps in it because then you have pockets of flour in your roof. So you don't want that. So you just want to whisk it to get all the lumps out. Typically what I do is I will um, sift my flour in here. I didn't do that this time. I normally sift it that way. It helps alleviate some of those lumps and bumps. But I'll be stirring this for the next 20 to 30 minutes until it is a mahogany brown. I won't stir it that fast. The only reason I'm stirring it this fast is to get all those lumps out. Once I get those lumps out, I'll do a consistent stir. Just a constant, just so I don't burn it. I wish I had one of those automatic stirs that I could put in, hit it, and let it just spin. But I'm cheap. I'm frugal. So, plus I, I like the process of stirring it up myself. Because then I know exactly when I have to stop. So I put one of those automatic stirs in here, I walk away, I forget it, and then I burn it. So this way I know it won't burn because I'm, I'm babysitting, I'm taking care of it, I'm making it sure it do, does what it's supposed to do. Um, I got my bouillon cubes over here in the water. Take my other whisk, and I just want to lightly whisk those so they can be incorporated into that water. I want to make sure these bouillon cubes are melt solidly in this water and uh, flavor all of the water. You don't want them just sit in one spot so that you have a concentration of flavor only in one spot of your uh, gumbo. So you wanna, once those cubes start to melt, you wanna just get a light stir on them so they, uh, so like I said, the flavor is not just in one spot. Um, I'm not gonna let you watch this process because it's long. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. As you can see, we're 20 minutes in. And it's becoming a, a nice little golden brown in here. I just want to get it a little bit darker, like mahogany. So I'm going to keep stirring it. And I also got my sausage back there. I know the recipe don't say uh, to cook these sausages, but I like to render some of that fat out. That way I can cook my okra and this sausage fat with a little white vinegar instead of bacon fat. So. Just let them sausages simmer. I'm going to continue to stir this, uh, this roux until it's a mahogany brown. I'm uh, 15 minutes in. No, 20 minutes in, I'm sorry. So in about another 10, 10, 15 minutes, it should be ready to do what it needs to do. It should be ready to uh, add the vegetables, the sausages. Bring that to a simmer for 10 to 15 minutes to the vegetables a little salt. And even though I, uh, I missed them. Still need to be, still need to be soft. So, as you can see, it's getting darker. It's just, like I said, it's a slow process, but it's well worth it in the end. Oh, well, since we've been gone, I put a little rice in my rice cooker. Enough for five people, so four cups of rice to be enough for five people. And what we do is uh, we put the gumbo on top of the rice. Put the fried chicken on the side. So, stay with me. Stay on this voyage. 
We're going to make it do what it do. Just be patient, baby. Just be patient. It's coming. As you can see, the roux is getting really, really brown. It's getting really, really brown. So it's almost where I want it to be. I just want to cook it probably about another five minutes. And I add my vegetables. Actually, it's, it's, where, it's actually where I want it. I'm going to turn this heat off. Pull it over here. And put on this trivet so I can stir it while it cools. And once it cool down, I'm going to... Oh, this is hot. Let me get some oven mitts. I'm going to try to tough it out. But I ain't that tough. Bring it over here. Take it off the heat. I keep the heat on because I'm going to bring it back over here and put the heat on. What I'm doing in that big pot is I'm bringing that, uh, bringing that water and beef bouillon cubes to a boil. And once I get all this stuff simmered and the vegetables cooked down and the sausage added into this roux, I'm going to incorporate all that in there and add all my seasonings. Like my thyme, uh, half of my uh, gumbo filet. I'm going to let that cook for about 45 minutes with my bay leaves, my sugar. Um, my, uh, my, my tomato sauce, stewed tomatoes, my Creole seasoning. And I'm going to just let that hang out for a minute. About 45 minutes, I'm going to add the rest of that filet, gumbo filet to it. And call it a day. See, I got that done. Now it's time to add, add these vegetables. vegetables. That's going to add a little bit more color to it. The vegetables in the roux get mixed together. And my cousin got me these uh, smoking hot oven mitts. I love them. Perfect. Because it tells, it tells me, it tells, it tells the story of me. I'm smoking hot, just like this pot right now. As you can see, I got the vegetables in here. This that celery, that bell pepper, that onion, the garlic. Now I'm gonna add these. I'm gonna add these uh, sausage in here too. I'm try to keep as much of that oil in the pan as possible, so I can add that uh, okra to there and let that cook, cook off a little bit. That okra I'm gonna put in last. I don't want that okra to get too slimy or get too soft. So I'm gonna try to take a little bit of that sliminess out of it by cooking it inside um, some oil. With a, if you don't do your sausage, if you don't grill your sausage like I do, we're gonna let this simmer for about five or six minutes. While I'm doing it, I'm gonna add this okra. It's back pan. You can see this okra that's been thawed out. Well, you can't see. So let me move this camera back there so you can see. Got my water over there boiling. Got my okra added to the back pot. I'm gonna add the two tablespoons of white vinegar. That'll help keep that from getting too good. I'm gonna stir it up and let that cook. Cook for about five, ten minutes. That way it gives us a little bit of substance, gives us a little, little body, so it's not too soft. We'll just let that sit and cook. While that's cooking, I'm going to keep stirring this up. Keep stirring up my vegetables and sausage. Because once this vegetable and sausage is done, it's going right in that boiling water, sitting right next to it. I have this on medium heat. It's got to simmer for about two or three more minutes. sticking to the bottom still don't want that to burn so I'm gonna keep stirring it see how that's thickening up oh oh this smells so good oh you need to be here to smell this mmm the okra's back there doing this thing handling this business cooking that water off of it cooking that 
the slime out of it. The vinegar is going to help out a lot. You can see I got multiple pots going. This gumbo ain't no easy task. But all this work will be worth it. See how my water's over there boiling? Once I get this where I need it, I'm going to scoop this out and just put it in there and incorporate it into that and add all my seasonings. Like I said, my sugar, my thyme, my bay leaves, um, my hot sauce, my salt, pepper to taste. I'm going to let that simmer for a little bit. I have my chicken staying warm in the oven. But I'm going to dice this up in fine pieces so it's... Mm, mm, mm. All y'all people out there don't think salt and pepper is a good, just salt and pepper on chicken is, is good enough. Just taste that chicken over there. All it has on it is salt and pepper and it is lovely. The vegetables is almost where I want them. Use my spatula that way, I don't leave a drop of it in here. It's all gonna go in that pot, it's all gonna go to summer in that pot. It's that, this pot about to be filled with so much flavor and goodness, it's gonna blow your mind. Can't wait to people eat this and see the smiles on their face once they pop this gumbo in their mouth, put it on top of a bed of rice. Woo! Gumbo got a lot of flavor. I'm gonna let this simmer for a few minutes and I'll be right back with you on the other side. All put right, it in the I'm pot. back. Like I said, I was gonna meet you on the other side. This is uh, my vegetables. Turn that heat off of there. I'm about to incorporate them into this boiling water. Once I get in there, I stir it up a little bit. Put it in a little bit at a time. Don't want it to be clumped up when you put it in there. Well, you don't want it to be clumpy. You want everything to get incorporated into the liquid. You see them pieces of garlic floating around in there. See all that onion and bell pepper. Mandui sausage. See, I'm using my spatula. So I don't, let, I don't lose any of my, so I don't lose any of my mixture. I had a whole mixture here. Get every drop out of there. Get all that out, I put this back over here. I get my whisk. And I whisk this real fast to break all that, all them vegetables up. Just to get all the vegetables in there. Get all the sausage in there. Just right now I'm just breaking up all those big clumps of vegetable so they can all be moving around swimming in all this goodness and incorporating themselves and feeling good. I'm gonna move this pot over here off the stove, put a little water in it so it's easy to wash once I get over here to wash my dishes later on. Still over here simmering my okra. We got that on a little heat. Whisk. I'm gonna whisk this up a little bit more. We still have this at a boiling temperature. It's at medium high right now. 
Once it start get to a rolling ball, I'm gonna turn it down, let it simmer. Like I said, I'm gonna add that thyme in there. Add the sugar. Add half of that filet duck, uh, fil uh, gumbo filet. And four bay leaves. Add the tomato sauce. It's only a six ounce, but this is an eight ounce can, so I use all eight. Two ounces can't hurt. Put them stewed tomatoes in there. Now I'm gonna whisk this all together, bring it to a simmer, and I'm gonna let that simmer for 45 minutes. Oh, you see that color, that beautiful, beautiful color. Oh man, you need to be here smelling this. This is something lovely. Mm -mm -mm. Sausage in there, that tomato in there, the onions, the bell peppers. Ooh, that celery, that gumbo filet, thyme. Go ahead and put a couple of dashes of hot sauce in there. Well, I don't have hot sauce in a regular hot sauce bottle. I have a squirt bottle. I'm gonna could give it a couple hit it a couple of times with that hot sauce. Give it a little bit of salt. And my man, Tony Satry. Some of that Tony Satry. About two tablespoons in there. And that should be enough to flavor this whole pot. Once I get them seasonings in there, I'm going to stir this up again just so I can incorporate it. Make sure it hit every inch of this pot. Make sure all them seasonings hit every inch of this pot. And once I get this stirred and incorporated, I'm going to let this go for about 45 minutes. During them 45 minutes, I'm going to check on my rice. I'm going to break my uh, crab meat down. I'm going to have my shrimp ready. Check, make sure I ain't, put, I ain't got no peels in there. I'm going to make sure my okra's ready. After 45 minutes, I'm going to add all those things in here. Let it go for another 45 that way all the flavor from the, the okra, the crab, and the uh, shrimp can be incorporated in this gumbo. This is my Cajun style gumbo. I didn't make it too high, I ain't put no jalapenos in there. I know some of y'all like, like that heat, so if you like that heat, whatever you can stand, you can put jalapenos in here, you can put habaneros in here, um, but don't make it too high, you want everybody to be able to eat it. And that's why I don't make mine too hot, because I'm, for one, I don't do real spicy. I can in the case of gumbo, but I don't do real spicy, so I'm going to make it good enough for me to eat. Check on my, my okra back here. Oh, my okra's almost ready. As soon as it's okra ready, I can turn the pan off. Mm. Yeah, that okra's good. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, oh, boy. There you go. The seeds are starting to pop out. Yeah, that's good. I can turn that heat off, and I can just let this sit and wait. Boy, it's turn to hop in the pot. Put a 45 minute time on this. Like I said, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna dice my chicken up, check on my rice. I'm gonna let this simmer, lay it off of course, the way I can see what it's doing. It haven't started simmering yet. Maybe if I stop stirring it, the watch pop won't boil. So I'm gonna quit watching it and let it do what it do. But you can look in, you can look in there and see all them flavors start to incorporate themselves into this lovely seven quart pot um, gumbo. Uh, seven quart pot of gumbo. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple jars and give it to a couple friends. Like I met this dude named Ben at Walmart tonight. He does a lot of cooking. He said he'd love to taste my gumbo when I get it done. He saw me shopping for my ingredients. And uh, so I, I got his phone number. So I told Ben I'd put him a jar aside and take it over to him later on or hit him with it tomorrow. It's probably going to be better tomorrow anyway because when you let this gumbo sit, gumbo is usually better when it sits overnight. But 
45 minutes, I'll check back in with y'all, show y'all what I'm adding, the chicken, the shrimp, the crab meat. In about 25 minutes after that, I'm gonna add them crab claws because that's gonna give you that crunch and bite that you need when you start pouring it in. Because normally people put crab legs in, I didn't want to do that. Crab legs is all you only put a few of them in there. You gotta break them up and then you get them chunks of crab uh, shell in your your food. I'm gonna put these crab claws in there, so you know it's a little bit smaller, so not 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 as much shell to break. So enjoy. I'll be back. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back. It's 45 minutes gone. I started asking my adding my um, gumbo filet. I'm adding my crab meat. This is one pound of lump crab meat. Then I add my three pounds of shrimp. And I add my diced chicken. Yeah. And I gingerly stir my gumbo. So as you see. Spill up to the brim. Mm -hmm. It's a five, I'm sorry, I said seven quart earlier. It's a five quart Dutch oven. So now you can see everything in there. That shrimp is in there. As you can see, we're back. It's 45 minutes. I've added my shrimp. I've added my okra. I've added my crab meat. I've added my diced chicken. I added the remaining gumbo filet. My Worcestershire sauce, as you can see, I just dropped that in there. Then I just stir this up gingerly. So as you can see, the pot is full. This is five quarts of gumbo. You see all that flavor in there? See all that meat? Oh, that's three pounds of shrimp, a pound of lump crab meat, two and a half pounds of diced grilled chicken breast, and then 10 ounces of okra pan seared and um, either bacon fat or sausage fat if you decide to grill your sausage off and a little bit of white vinegar to cut a little bit of that you know that slipperiness off of that okra so I don't think too many people like that I know I don't I usually don't put okra in my gumbo but I had a friend tell me the other day that ain't gumbo if it if it ain't got no, no okra in it I was like, oh man, you might be right. So, cause I'm, I don't, I don't particularly like okra, unless it's fried, any boiled, stewed, or any kind of okra like that. I don't deal, deal with. So, I stir this up. I'm gonna let this go for another 25 minutes. At that 25 minute mark, I'm gonna drop them crab claws in there. Let it go for another 20 minutes. My rice is already done. I'm gonna just get me a bed of rice in a bowl. Pour me some gumbo over the top of it. Start frying this chicken. My cousin gotta eat too. Mm, look at that pot. Starting to come together. Big pot starting to come together. Got your okra in there. Got your crab meat. Got your chicken. You got your andouille sausage. That I seared off a little bit. Gave him a little color. Got your, uh, three pounds of shrimp. So there's plenty of shrimp up in this joking. Plenty of shrimp up in there. As you can see, I'm on the last stage. Just put the crab claws in there. Just gotta let it sit for 20 more minutes. And this job could be done. Probably gonna add some pictures of a, of a plate to together, but that ends this edition of Yep. That's what's for dinner. Got the gumbo made, got the chicken already over here frying. So, had a pretty good night. Thank you for joining me. Catch you on the next one. Yep, that's what's for dinner.